Bismillah, Rahman the Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Ashadu an la ilaha illallahu wahdahu la sharik lahu. Wa ashadu anna muhammadin abduhu wa rasuluhu. Sadallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa ala alihi wa sabbihi ajma'in. And Mubarak. And the translation is with Allah's name, the merciful, benefactor, the merciful redeemer. And all the praises belongs to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds and all systems of knowledge. We witness as Muslim that Allah God is, is one, he's one, he's singular and alone, with no help or partners, no help or partners, dear Muslim, in the rule and the keep and the management of the heavens and the earth. We witness as Muslims, as believers, that Muhammad is Allah honorable and generous servant and messenger. And prayers and peace be upon the last prophet and what follows in that excellent salutation and that traditional salute to the last prophet. Amen. Dear believers, dear Muslim, we ask Allah for his assistance and we seek Allah for forgiveness. We believe in him? Yes, we do. And we put our complete trust and faith in him. And we witness that none is divine. None is divine but him. Yes, and none deserve to be worshipped except him alone. Is that right? Except him alone. So this is how we are Muslim always begin by giving recognition and honor to Allah. The one who is responsible, please listen, please listen, the one who is responsible for everything good in our life. Isn't that beautiful power for everything good in our, in our life? And the Quran say, all that which is good come from Allah, because he is pure and good. So only good come from Allah. And that which is evil come from your own deeds and your own actions. Alhamdulillah. So he is not only the one that is responsible for everything good in our life, but responsible for all the benefits. You know, all them benefits and blessings that we have coming to us, you, you know where they're coming from, right? They come from Allah. So we ask Allah on this blessed day, Ajuma, O oh Allah, forgive us of our faults and our mistakes, our errors, our sins, and our sh shortcoming. O oh Allah, forgive us. And grant us the blessing of faith. And I want to extend to all of you, Jumma Mubarak. Allah say in the Quran, in our sacred book, in our holy book, dear Muslim. And this is a reading from Ayat 135 in Surah 4. 
Allah say Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ya ayyuhal ladina la manu kunu kawamina bil kisti shahada lillahi walla ala anfusikun anfusikun and the translation is Allah say this is Allah speaking in the Quran, O oh, you who believe, Allah says, stand out firmly for justice as witness to Allah, as witness to God, even as against your own self, yourself, yourself. So, in our holy book, in our sacred book, Allah in this surah and ayat that he revealed to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it talks about us being just and standing, alhamdulillah, as a witness, even against yourselves, against yourself. And the message here, when we are wrong, we are supposed to Admit that I'm wrong. I'm wrong. You know, I taught behavior modification, and in behavior modification, they say the four most powerful word that we can say. Listen to this here, because we all need to hear this. The four most powerful word that we can say is, "I made a mistake." You hear that, brothers and sisters? I made a mistake. We're not perfect. The only one is perfect, has perfection, is Allah. We are perfectly imperfect, perfectly imperfect as human beings. So those are four most powerful words. I admit, I made a mistake, a mistake. Most of us can't do that. If we do wrong or whatever, we can't admit that I made a mistake. And it's interesting, I'm just sharing this with you in behavior modification, where they say the two most powerful words is thank you. Thank you. They say they're two of the most powerful words. This is in behavior modification. Thank you. You know, parents say when they give children something, you know, can't you say thank you? <laughs> you know, can you say thank you? The two of the most powerful words, if you think about it, it, it is two of the most powerful words. Thank, thank you. You show that you appreciate the service and the help that you're getting, right? Thank you, mommy. Thank you, daddy. Or thank you, whoever, you know, thank you. That's two, two most powerful words. It makes the person who's saying it feels good, and it makes the person who's hearing it feels good. It let them know that you appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you, sister. Alhamdulillah, power. And I got to share this with you right, right quickly and then move on. Hope we kind of get something from that to help shape and mold our ca character. And they say the, the, the one most negative word, do you know what the, 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 the most negative word is? The one most negative word is me. Me. You ever talk to people? When they taught you to talk about themselves, me, 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 me. They said that's the most negative word that you can say. Or I this, I this, I this, I this. <laughs> me and I, the two most negative words. Think about that. Think about it. So, this message that we're getting from the Quran, from this ayat, for us, to think about justice, Muslim, our consciousness should be on justice, and that we should stand as a witness uh, against, our, even against ourselves. Do you know, you know, listen, I'm not going to be long, but, but listen, because we're talking from the Quran. The, the precious quality of life that Allah has blessed us with, that we take for granted, you know, we read and study to 
for us to get here, we have to go through so much struggle. They say for that sperm to even get to the egg, right? We read about that, right? Billions, millions, and billions of sperm trying to get to the egg. And many of them don't get there, right? Don't get there. But, but Allah, <laughs> Allah blessed us that we got there. Because we're here, right? We're here. But how many of us think about the other millions and millions of sperm that never got to the egg? But we made it. Takbir, Allah Akbar. Allah bless us that we are that we are here. So, so this is a precious life that Allah has given us. And the quality of our life, please listen, inshallah, Allah know best. The quality of our life is our ability to make uh, advancement, to grow into being better and better. That's how our life is constructed, it's, it's constituted, that we can grow and advance into better and better quality of life. The, the, cat, the cat can't do that. The dog can't do that. Animals, they can't do that. They can't evolve. They are clocked and fixed in their nature. They're fixed in their nature, right or wrong. But the human being is unique uh, that Allah created, if you understand. And revelation means Allah is telling us something to, about yourself that you didn't know. So this precious quality of life, I hope you appreciate it a little more, of life, is our ability for advancement. For, for amen. We're the only creature that was created so we can show growth, and advancement into being better and better. Now, so Allah also, this is important. Please listen, brothers. Allah know best. Though. Allah is telling us to do what? To stand up. That's what He's telling us to do through Prophet Muhammad, so they said, to stand up. And what will happen if we stand up? Don't take this lightly. Don't underestimate this. What will happen if we stand up? If we stand up, I want you to hear this here. If we stand up, we will have establishments. That's right. If we obey Allah, his messenger, if we stand up, we will have establishments. Like everybody else. If we stand up, we will have institutions. And that's what Allah is telling us. So he wants us to stand up, not just in our body, because some of us interpret that to be that, not to just stand up in our body and have uh, good, moral, good morals, good morals, that's good. Yeah, he wants that too. He wants us to stand up in our bodies, to have good morals, to have good spirit, to have good spirit, to have good principles, to have good values and strive for more excellence. Yes, he want that too. But we want us to stand up so we can have establishment, to have institutions. Do that make sense? Isn't that beautiful? Because that's what we want to see. Up and down Springfield Avenue, or Clinton Avenue, South Avenue. We want to see, right brothers and sisters, institution and establishment in our name with our names on it. That's what we want, see? Alhamdulillah. I hope you're understanding this. I hope this understanding this. This, this, is, this is serious. This is serious. So, what, so what's going to stand us up? The Quran. That's not spooky. This book, if you read it and sincere, will stand you up. Am I right or wrong? Will stand you up. To me, that's clear. We read this book with sincerity, it will stand us up. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Standing up Muslim human beings all over the world. That's what makes us stand up the Quran. And let me share this too. And also, 
The Sunnah of Muhammad the Prophet will make us stand up. Isn't that beautiful? The Quran will make you stand up, brother, and be a man. The Sunnah of Muhammad the Prophet will make you stand up, brother and sister, to be a man and a woman. Even when we call the Adan, the Muaddin, when he just called it Adan, you should be conscious of this. We, we should be conscious of it. He said, Hayya Allah Salah. Hayya from the word life, life. Hayya mean life, living, living, living. A Muslim not dead. There's not no funeral parlor we in now. <laughs> we ain't in no funeral parlor. So the Muaddin said to us, Hayya. He's saying, come alive. Ooh. But how many that register? When he called it, it sounds beautiful, though, but some would just hear the word, but don't understand the, the, the deep uh, meaning, meaning and value of importance of what he's saying. I'm just giving you a little bit of it. So he's saying, really, and we see our principal, our weekend school there, Sister Nisi Muhammad, our principal, our weekend school. And I'm going to mention this here. That's what he's saying to her. Come alive. Come alive, Muslim. To what? Education. That's exactly what he's saying. Come alive to education. Ooh. Come alive to knowledge. And Prophet Muhammad said, if you want to know this, most of us don't even know Prophet Muhammad. Most of us don't even know Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad established education when he started his mission in the world. His number one priority, did you know that, was education. And he freed he, uh, the one who was captured were freed if they taught Muslim to read and write. Prophet Muhammad gave them their free, freedom, their, free, their freedom. So what were he doing? Putting value. I hope you were hearing this for you and your children, brothers, and how important education and knowledge is. And that's what the Muslim was saying to you like Salah. Don't forget that. How you like Salah. So it's talking about what? Education. Every time I hear the Muslim say, how you like Salah, how you like Salah, I think about education. That's what go to my, but he's saying it, and nothing going to your, you register in your conscience. You missing the whole message. You mean you, you just living in rituals. You living in rituals and rituals in darkness. Rituals in darkness until you understand what the ritual means. Isn't that powerful? Yeah. So don't forget that. Talking to myself too. Don't you forget that? How you like that? How you like that? Come to education. Come to knowledge. Come to knowledge. Now. So every time you hear that from now on, what you going to think about? Education and knowledge. That's what you should be thinking about for yourselves and for our children, for our next generation. Right or wrong for the next generation. That's serious. Yeah, this is a serious kuppa. And then he said to Muaddin, all this we should remember. He's how you lie. Fella, I'm just, I'm just saying this quickly. So we'll be conscious of these things. Just don't be satisfied uh, going through the richer brothers, but don't have no understanding. That's what Shaitan wants. He wants to keep you in darkness. He wants to keep you in the darkness so he can rule us forever. Powerful. And then the mother said, how you like, fella, fella. And you know what fella is talking about? Business. Business. Economic. <laughs> oh boy, that's deep. How you like, feel like he's talking about business and economics? Yeah. So every time I hear the other when he say, how you like, how you like, I say, education, knowledge. My mind go right there. A lot of my way, my mind go there. I'm not just hearing the beautiful word. And then when I'm well, say, how you like, feel like, how you like, feel like, come to economic growth and development and business development. Whoa, that's beautiful. In our world, in the it, brother? It's beautiful. A lot of wisdom that's there. And we're waiting 
just a little humor. Don't just see it and don't reflect on it and try to do something about it. Come to business life, business development. So I'm waiting and looking for the grand opening. <laughs> the little humor. I'm waiting to listen with until some of these brothers taking and sisters taking taking this serious. And they're gonna take this message and everything. They're gonna try to get into business, some kind of business and everything. They're gonna try to get into some business. How many of you know Prophet Muhammad was a businessman? He was a businessman. Ooh, you knew that. That's not there for a reason. The Prophet Muhammad, the messenger of Allah, a businessman? His wife, a businesswoman? His companions, Sahaba, all of them business people. That's a message for me. That's a big message for me. And then the largest uh, surah in the Quran, Al-Baqarah, the largest surah in the Quran, is talking about business and economic commerce and development. Who the Quran ain't no joke, but I'm telling you, Allah Akbar. Yeah. So all this is supposed to help us, to help us grow and understand. I had mentioned this here. I pray to Allah bless us all to get to the promised land. And I know, dear Muslim, if I was a betting man, and I'm not, I'm not a betting man, I know Allah is going to bless us to get to the promised land. Allahu Akbar. Don't you feel that way? That we're going to get to the promised land. I want to share a few more things. I hope that we benefit from it. Dear Muslim, dear beloved Muslim, we are, we are here. We are here. But I hope that you are conscious, that we are conscious, that we are here in the community of Al Islam. How many of you, how many of you are living with that awareness? I'm serious. How many of you living there with that awareness? We are, we, are, we are here, dear Muslims, believers, in the community of Al Islam. Though we live in this pluralistic society, and it is, Judo, Judo uh, Christ, Christian society, Judaism, that's a fact. A pluralistic society. Judaism and Christianity. But also, we live here in America in a community of Al Islam. I thought about that. That's beautiful. We're living in a Christian, Judean society. But I'm living. My life as a Muslim in the community of Al Islam, even in this Judea Christian society. On your job, wherever you are, when it's time for Salah, what you do? You try to go somewhere and make the Salah. Don't you? You try to do it. Well, if you don't, you should be trying to do it, you know, trying to do it on the job, whatever, Try to do it. Because though we're living in a Christian society, in a Judea society, I see myself living in a community of El Islam. Because when it's time for the prayer, I'm going to show sure go somewhere and try to find a place to pray. If it's in my car, in the closet, I go, go somewhere. I'm going to try to do my prayer. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not going to dwell on that. Some of you got the point. So we, we, we live in a community of El Islam. Well, that make me feel good. And what else do we have with us in the community of El Islam? We have the Quran. Some of you got little small portable ones and everything. With the Quran at home, we got a big one here. A sister donated it to the master. Yet. A beautiful Quran. So we are with the Quran. We're living in a community of El Islam, and we are with the Quran. Let me tell you something. Don't you forget this. We know 
that the Quran is our authority. What is our authority, brother and sister? The Quran. Do I have to say it again? The Quran is the authority. The Quran is the boss. And there is no authority. Oh, that's powerful. Oh, that's powerful. There is no authority above the Quran for Muslim. Ain't no other thought about the Quran. This is the boss. Yes. And that should be clear to Muslims throughout the world who sometimes fighting for power and leadership. Allah is the boss. <laughs> Allah is in, the, in authority. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he best demonstrated that authority. He best demonstrated that authority. How how we as Muslims to live with each other in our lives as Muslims. I'm going to say that again. Because some of us, we don't know how to live with each other. You know, sometimes Muslims, we don't get along. Arrogant, disrespectful, think you better than somebody and everything. So the Quran and Prophet Muhammad demonstrated to us I hope you're listening. How we are to live with each other in our lives as Muslims. And also, the Quran not only demonstrates how we are to live with each other because we don't know how to treat each other and how to respect each other. But the Quran also, this is a beautiful book, teaches us how to live with our neighbors. Woo! With our neighbor. It teaches us how to live with others in the society. That's our power of the Quran here, isn't it? How we're to live with each other. You hear me, brother, sir? How we to live with each other. And how... It's no guesswork. And how we are to live with our neighbors in society. That's what the Quran demonstrated. Yes. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I leave you to authorities. Please listen. Prophet Muhammad said, I leave you to authority, authorities. As long as you hold to them and do not deviate, as long as you hold to them and do not deviate, you will not go astray. Takbir. That's, that's what we're saying, brother. The prophecy, I'm leaving you to authority. If you don't deviate from them, you will never go astray. And he named them. So we won't be in the system. He named them. They are the Quran, the one authority, and Prophet Muhammad demonstration as to how that book is to be lived. Called his Sunnah. That's the two things that he told us. If we follow and don't deviate, he said, you will never go astray. You will never go astray. He said, the Quran again, and he said, and my demonstration of how that book should be lived, which is called my sunnah, my sunnah. Not how brother so-and-so live it if he's not doing it by the Quran and sunnah, or sister so-and-so doing it, but it's clear to us we are to Follow it based on the Quran and Prophet Muhammad uh, example of how the Quran should be lived, which is called his Sunnah, his Sunnah. If we do that, we okay. If we study, dear Muslim, and I'm about to finish the first part. If we study the events in the Prophet's life, and that's why it's extremely important. And I'm understanding this more and more myself. It's, it's extremely important 
that we study the Quran and the life of Prophet Muhammad. And we need to study the Quran just like you do more seriously than you do math or, or science or chemistry or physics. We put a study more intense as, student, as a student of the Quran, as a student of the Quran. And if we do that, we can never be deceived or misled. So that's why it's important, very important. I can't emphasize it enough for us to study the Quran and the life of Prophet Muhammad. We should spend our life studying that. The events in his life, to study his personality, his spirit, his, his, temper, his temperament, his temperament, his wisdom, his wisdom. All of this, when we study the Quran and study like Prophet Muhammad, we learn these things. We learn these things. And if we do that, we won't be misled or deceived. Don't waste your time, young people. L listen to what I'm saying. I know what I'm talking about. Don't waste your time, especially young people, following these stupid, that's right, that's what I said, following these stupid people who have no credits, have no credits, no achievements, no accomplishment. I'm talking to the older Muslim, but I'm talking to young people. Don't waste your time following these stupid people. They have no credits. And you listen to them. No establishment. No institution. And we're going to listen to them and follow, and follow them. I'm giving you good advice. I'm giving myself good advice. If you want advice, go talk to a wise person. Huh? Go talk to a wise brother or sister in, in religion. Or a wise person in science. In science. That have knowledge and have achievement and accomplishment. Institution and establishment. Go talk to them. How are you going to go and talk to someone who haven't done anything? That makes zero sense. <laughs> That makes zero sense, does it? It makes zero sense. Is, 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 is that not right? So this world, in conclusion, or the first part, this world is growing. I hope this is valuable to me. That Quran and the, and the Sunnah is so powerful to me. You know, if we understand them, we can see the value of it. The world is growing. Whether you are growing with the world, <laughs> that's another thing, but the world is growing. But when you think about it, if you look at history, when all these great prophets, you would think that, and, and, and great leaders, I thought about this, all these great prophets and great leaders over the time, over year, wouldn't you think that the world would be more advanced, more progress? It sure seemed that way. All of these great prophets and messengers of God have come, and other great leaders that we can read about have come, it seems that though some of us have not grown a progress. Isn't that right? That's sad. It seems that we have not even grown a progress. So Allah wants us to understand in the final analysis that our society or community is more important. I want to just go through this and, and conclude the first part, but, but, but listen to this so we can understand where we're going, where we're trying to go. Don't be blind. Got blinders on, you don't know where you're going. You don't know where you're going. We won't know, know where we're going. In the final analysis, here's what Allah wants us. He wants us to understand, and we conclude the first part, that society is more important than the individual. The society is more important, brother and sister, than the individual. That's deep. That's deep. If you reflect on it, think about it. The society is more important than the individual. We, we group together, Allah wants us to group together to grow in the plan that Allah has made for our life. And it's not individual. It's not individual. We have to group together to grow in the plan that Allah has for us. And I'm going to tell you why. Some of you know this and some of you don't. We have to group to grow in the environment 
to grow in the plan of law made for our life. We have to come together. It's not an individual responsibility. It's not an individual responsibility. We can't do it as an individual. You hear what I just said? I'm sure this is serious talk. Some of you think you can do it as an individual. You cannot do it as an individual. That's how other people ahead of us, because we think, and you may think that's a small point, a light point, but most of us have the mentality to thinking that we can do it as an individual. You cannot do it as an individual. It's not an individual responsibility. Are you hearing me? We can't do it as just an individual. And no one leader can do it. No one leader can do it. This is helping some of us. Some of us just going right past us. No one leader can do it. No one human being can do it. It takes the whole group. We should get something from this. It takes the whole group. To establish your life is a group project. It's a group project. Wisdom, ancient wisdom. It's a group project. Individually, some of you may make it, doing it, trying to do it individually, but most of us, you're not going to do it unless we do it as a group, and that's what a lot of us. The proof of what I'm saying is why we have sure. Sure. We heard a sure, right? Listen, I'm finishing the first part. The reason why we have sure. And sure, if we understand how important it is, is, sh sh brother says that we all are learning, we're students of the Quran. Shura is the most important element for establishing the Islamic community. The Quran, the three things that we need to establish the Islamic community. The Quran, the Sunnah of Muhammad the Prophet and Shura. Three. You'll have to be very studious now to hear this to the, uh, the first part of this goodbye to its conclusion. Three. To establish a community, we learn, can't do it by yourself. No one individual person, no one leader can do it. Even Prophet Muhammad can't do it by himself. What do you think he has to hop into See, some of us, we are so shot out from reality. Prophet Muhammad can't build no community society by himself. He had companion people helping him all the way. That's what we got to understand. He had to have help. He had to have Sahaba's companion working along with him. Am I right or wrong? That's the truth. He had to have people to help him. No one individual can build this society. That's what Allah is telling us. We need each other, brothers. So that's the message here. That we need each other. If you think about it, you're going to do something all by yourself all alone, you forget it. I hope I'm making that very clear, but this is in conclusion. So, the most important elements, some of us knew this and some of you didn't, the most important element for establishing the Islamic community, don't you forget this, is Quran, Sunnah, and Shura. We have to have the third dimension or element working in our lives for us. And that is sure. Allah obligates the collective body. Allah says indirectly, but also directly through Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Hadith, Yadullah Allah Jamah. The hand of Allah is on the group. He's on the group. See, he's on the group. And he said on the individual. The hand, the power, the control of Allah is on the group, on the collective body, and that is the society. I'm going to make a dua right there, but I want to, in the second part, real quickly, to comment, to give some more uh, commentary, tafsir, on this here. The hand of Allah is on the group. The hand of Allah is on the community. Rubbing now at Tina Fidunia.
Hassanathan, what fair cute Hassanathan? Walk in there to them now. And there is our Lord. Give us excellent life. Give us excellent in here to save us from the fires of sin and save us from the hellfire. Amen. Alhamdulillah. Rub your life me. Bismillah. Hear Rahman the Rahim. Wassalam, wassalam, ala Rasulullah Kareem. What is Kuba about today? How to establish the community life, how to establish the society. The formula right there. What is it? Quran, Sunnah, Shura. If you want to be successful. Now let's go on talking about this a little more. Wow. Wow. The Prophet Muhammad said, the hand of Allah is on the collective body. Meaning the society. On the society. The collective body. The, 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 this hand, all these things got to be interpreted by us. The hand means, according to the scholar, listen, you know a lot don't have no hands like this. <laughs> you know, a lot don't have hands like that. So what did this hand mean? But it's there. In the Quran, it's in the Hadith, it's talking about hand. So how are we to understand that, dear Muslim? To get the benefit and value of it. Hand, according to the scholars, mean that Allah obligates the collective body. The collective body. We know Allah obligates the individual too. We are all obligated by Allah, aren't we? But he obligates the, co the collective body. His control, his hand, is his control, is to protect his plan for the co collective body. So Allah is going to determine the destiny, the destiny. He's in control and in charge of all of that, isn't it? That's right. Yes, indeed. But he's telling us who his hand is over, the collective. Don't you want Allah's hand to be over you? Well, then you should be a part of the collective body or the collective group. And that's where Allah's hand and control is, according to the scholar. He's obligated to the collective body. And his control is to protect his plan for the co collective body. That's how Allah protects his plan for the collective body. And... This here, I had mentioned before, and hope you better understand this. Islam is a true republic. Islam is a true republic. I hope you don't forget that. You, say, say it, you should say it to yourself a thousand times or more. Islam is a true republic. So all of this we are learning, we are discovering this here in the religion. Islam is a true republic. It's a republic, meaning what? It's a society. When we say Islam is a true republic, how many of us know what that means? How many of us know what that means? To say Islam is a true republic. You have to understand what that means, right, brother? You have to understand what that means. When we say Islam is a true republic, it means, boy, this is so beautiful. It means that it's a society that holds it people of public or, or, or hold the public responsible for its state. Do you know what it means, Muslim believer, when we say Islam is the true republic? It means that Islam holds is public responsible for everything. It's not just the imam, it's every one of you. Brother, it's every one of you. That's why we say Islam is a republic. And sister, every one of you. When we say Islam is a republic, it means that every brother, every brother, 
irresponsible. Isn't that powerful? You think the man put to do every damn thing. Some of us think like that. Or that brother supposed to do everything. No! Now we got the wisdom and understanding. Why Islam is a republic because it, it holds every brother, you hear me brother, responsible for the community. And sister, Islam holds you responsible for this community, for this community. Don't you be looking around what he will be doing, he will be doing that. No, what about you? That's a, I, I should just stop the cookbook right there. If we walk away from here with that understanding, we're going to be all right. But I'm going to go a little further to clarify. Responsible for the master your brother and sister. Responsible for education, my brother and sister. Responsible for business development, brothers and sister. Responsible for economics development, brothers and sister. Responsible for government. All that's on each and every one of us. Have I made that clear? On each and every one of us. That is powerful. Oh, Allah, that is powerful if you leave from here with that understanding. You can't blame anyone else, point your finger, you're not doing your share. Islam is a republic. I know what I'm talking about. Islam is a republic. And if we on our job, I was thinking about this coming here today for the Juma, for the Kuba. And I was saying, in all these areas, if the brothers and sisters we would get on our job after hearing this Kuba today, if all of what was step involved, step up and get involved. Let's get on the job, brothers. Let's get on the job, brothers. Let's get on the job, brothers and sisters. Let's get on the job. Now we know that Islam is a republic. And I'm responsible in Canada. You know, the thought, and I'm gonna do a part two to this here, that you're gonna want to hear. I'm not, I'm not trying to make myself look like nothing, because I know I'm nothing but a little grain of sand. That's all I am, is a little grain of sand, a little grain of sand that Allah picked up and made me an imam. I'm just a grain of sand, I understand that. But I can't give all of this today, inshallah. Next week, I'm going to get part two of this here. Because I think we helped all of you by, you better understand that Islam is a republic. It's a republic. And here's the thought that, that came to my mind. In closing, Islam is a republic, meaning that we're responsible for this mess here. The progress and growth of this measure is not just the imam, but what? All of us. Right or wrong? All of us. We are responsible for the school, for education. Not just Sister Nisa, the principal of the weekend school, or the teachers. But we all are responsible for Islamic education for these children. For these children. Am I right or wrong? We all are responsible. What you for to do? Sit on the sideline and just a few of us try to educate the children? No. All of us should be engaged and involved. Is that clear? When it comes to education. We all should be working together collectively since we know a lot of hand is on the group. We supposed to be getting together with other brothers and sisters and say, how can we open up a business? How can we open up a business in the community, in the neighborhood? There's no business in, uh, in uh, Islamic business in the Muslim community or neighborhood. Then we're supposed to get together and do something about that. Right, brother and sister? When you go to Mecca, don't, don't let nobody spook you. When you go to Mecca, though, who made hard, you see businesses on both sides, from the hotel all the way to the Kaaba. That's all you see is business. But sometimes they come over here and act like business is haram. Some of, act, some, of us, excuse me, some of us acting so stupid, excuse me, they act like money is wrong. Damn, how you would think money is wrong if you get it legally? But some of us think, oh, no, stuff for a law, brother, money, that's wrong. You, excuse me, I'm not going to say, but that's how messed up some of us are. Everything is wrong. But here's the closing point. Since we know Islam is a republic, 
to hold us all, everyone obligated and responsible for education, for the school, for business and economic development, for government, for government. Those are the four birds, the four birds, education, business, culture, and government. Those are the four birds. Those are the four concerns. Those are the four dimensions. Those are the four developments that Allah want us to work in. Now, and we got some of the, but well, we got some good people. We got some of the Muslim League of Voters here. You see, they're sitting right here amongst us. Members of the Muslim League of Voters. Yeah, they know what to do. Yeah, ain't that beautiful? That's right. We are proud of them. And, and our community, our beautiful community, the Muslim League of Voters. Here's what we're supposed to be doing. And I want to leave this message with you. Leave this message with you. If we get on the job, and stop just talking, but get on the job, understand that Islam is a republic, guess what we're supposed to be doing? We are supposed to be preparing a young brother or sister right now to be the mayor of the city of Newark. I'm not playing, that's what we, we supposed to be grooming a brother or a sister. I said brother and sister. Woo, ain't that real talk? If we are together, we supposed to have a brother groomed and ready to be the mayor of the city of Newark or any other city. Am I right or wrong? And we are supposed to be having a brother or a sister grooming them, ready to be the councilman of the North War, the South War, the East War, the West War, the Central War. We're supposed to be ready, grooming them to take coming to leadership. Oh, but what are we, what are we doing? Arguing, complaining, making excuses and everything. And I'm proud to say, and I'm finished, but I think I'm opening up our eyes wide and clear. We are proud to have Sister Amina B.R., a student of Muhammad University of Islam, a product of the Clara Muhammad School System, a product of the Nation of Islam. Matter of fact, I were her, uh, one of her teachers, and I'm proud to say she's running for Councilwoman of the Central War, Takbir, a sister from our community, from our association, running for Councilwoman of the Central War. And hope she evolve and go all the way up to a Councilwoman at large if she so desire. And I'm sure that the Muslim League of Voter have brother, other brothers and sister candidates in mind. That's the kind of strategy that we're supposed to have if we understand that Islam, Al-Islam is a republic. Thank you. I hope you got the message.